My name is Corey Redstone and we're in Salt Lake City, Utah today at the Warehouse of Peaceful Uprising. I'm the art director of Peaceful Uprising. Welcome to my space. I first got involved with Peaceful Uprising in 2009 and one thing that we do do differently is not only nonviolent civil disobedience, but we like to express ourselves artistically, whether it's through song, we do street theater, a lot of puppets and banner making and things like that. So if you see a peaceful uprising demonstration, you'll know it because it's full of color, it's full of expression, and we talk about what we believe and we talk about what the world can look like through our art. Today we're going to go over some banner making techniques. I'm going to show you how to make two types of banners. This is just a basic flag banner that you can use for a demonstration. Notice it has a rigid top and a rigid bottom, and this is suspended on a 1x2 or on a tall piece of bamboo or possibly even PVC. This is what I call a marquee banner. We're going to go over this as well. This is something that you would want maybe at the beginning of a march or something to use as a backdrop at a stage or maybe where people are giving speeches. It's going to have your main message on it. When the media comes to your events, they're going to shoot the faces of your protesters. They're going to shoot possibly parents and children. They're going to shoot people putting themselves in lock boxes. But they're also going to get pictures of your beautiful demonstration. And so when you have tall flags high above you, above the demonstration, and talking about your message, it's guaranteed to get on camera. It's going to get you more media playtime, and it's going to really help you communicate with the audience at large. So we're going to go over the process of banner making and we're going to start with materials. Before you even collect your materials, before you even start to make your banner, you need to talk to the people that are organizing the demonstration. You need to understand what you're communicating, you need to understand why you're communicating it, you need to understand what you're asking for, and you need to understand the politics behind the organization and behind the demonstration as a whole sketchbook, your Bible. Sketch ideas in here, write anything, brainstorm, start there. Once you work with your team and you know what you want done, you're going to want a sketch of your design. As for materials, there are a few different types of fabric you can use. We have taffeta here. Taffeta is very lightweight. You can use taffeta or you can use parachute fabric. Parachute fabric tends to bleed a little bit more. But the thing with taffeta is this is for a drop banner. And a drop banner is one of those large banners that you see up on top of a building, maybe coming down off of a grain silo or a coal stack. And taffeta is very lightweight and you can bunch it up really quickly. You can even fold it up, you can put it in your clothes. Um, there are a lot of different uses for this. Today we won't be painting on taffeta, but the process for making a banner on taffeta for making a drop banner is very similar. You're going to need a T-square. If you're going to use a stencil technique, which we'll go over later, you're going to want acetate. You're going to need pieces of bamboo for the top and bottom of the banner. You're going to need a tall pole that the banner is going to stand on. So this is going to get it up above the heads of your protesters. You may want a hot glue gun. You're going to need a projector. If you don't have a projector, don't stress about it. You can certainly just draw lines on your banners with a pencil. They'll never show up and just freehand it. Remember, these are handmade, they should look handmade. Paint brushes. You're gonna want strips of old tire. These are just bike, bicycle tire pieces cut up. You're going to need a flat face stapler, strong string, scissors. You're gonna want fabric scissors. You'll need a measuring tape, masking tape, pencils, maybe some towels to wipe your hands on and definitely some old house paint. If you're going to do stencils and you're going to do a lot of banners, you might want to consider using spray paint. Don't forget that you're going to want mixing cups. If you are making a series of banners, you're going to want the colors to match and you might be adding white to something. When you paint the background, you're going to want the background lighter than the text. So you're going to want to mix large quantities of paint. Now I'm cutting fabric for a rectangular banner. You may want to work out the proportions just in front of you. Sometimes it's easier to have it in front of you. But this banner is about 36 inches wide. And I'm thinking it will look good if we maybe make it, let's see, probably about 
almost 60 inches long. Don't forget that you're going to want to give yourself about three or four inches on the top and the bottom for sewing those pockets for that piece of bamboo that I showed you in the beginning. So I'm just gonna put a mark here. And voila, there's the beginning of our banner. So before we go into the other room, I just wanna show you what we're going to be doing. Um, this is the series of banners that I designed for our protest. And so I've got four different designs. We'll probably make four of each banner. So that means that will give us 16 total. Today we're going to be making the banner that says Dirty Air Kills. And in the background, I have a skull and crossbones. Very simple, quick sketch, took me five seconds. You can do the same thing. So I brought my fabric in here and I've got my image on the computer. Let's just pull it up. I'm not going to use the entire image, just the general shape. And keep in mind that most people are going to see this from 30 feet away or more. So you want the image very large. You don't need a lot of detail and it doesn't need to be perfect. There we go, there's our image. Let's take it in the other room and we're gonna paint this thing. Okay, so I'm mixing up the paint that I'm going to use. Notice I'm doing it in a container that I can close again. So when I paint my next banner, I'll have the same color available. I've gone ahead and I've added some white to this green that we're going to be using. You're probably going to wanna do um, lighter colors behind dark text, or if you're doing light colored text, like white text, do darker colors behind it. You're always gonna want your text to be very visible and pop. The other thing you should know is if you're making a large amount of these, if I wasn't doing four, I would choose to cut a stencil. This is a roll of acetate. You can find it at most art stores. And I would have done the same thing tracing. I would have just used a Sharpie and traced my design onto the acetate and then cut it out with a sharp, with a sharp knife. Before I lay this in, I'm going to need to staple it down. Notice that I'm using my particle board but this is going to make sure that our fabric stays straight as we paint it, doesn't blow around. And um, if you're painting the entire background, it's going to make your banner look really flat and really clean. Lay in your initial image with a large brush. If you choose to add water to water down your paint a little bit, be careful, it can kind of bleed. It's a nice puke green color. This will definitely communicate that dirty air kills. You can imagine how convenient this is though to just set up like four or six of these tables and you can just get a bunch of volunteers in on one day and you just kind of run an assembly line basically. You have one person on stencils, one person on tracing and you just turn them out. You can do them really quick. All right. That's pretty much all laid in. Our skull and crossbones are dry and now we're going to lay in the text. I know that I want the word dirty right here and so that's what I'm going to trace first and then I'll move the banner. So I've moved my second word, air, where I want it and I'm just going to trace it. Make sure that you're keeping the projector um, at, at the same distance from what you're projecting so that your text is the same size, unless you wanna change the size of your text. All right, so now I've adjusted the word kills to be just a little bit bigger, moved the projector back, and kind of tinkered with where I want the word exactly, and I'm gonna go ahead and trace it. All right, the last word's done and it's time to go in the other room and finish painting this. So there are a few different options for when you, when you finish painting your banner. If you have a sewing machine, that's best. You should just fold over what you're going to need to follow to fit the top and bottom rods in and then pin it and sew it. Some other options, you can also use hot glue. If it's gonna be really windy, I wouldn't recommend it, but hot glue does work pretty well. Um, one other thing you could do is tape the edge. So just for the sake of time today, we're going to use tape on the edge.
So now we're going to prepare the stick that the entire sign stands on. And we're going to notch the center for the, the piece of string that we're going to use on it. You can use a chisel or you can use a razor knife like this. Just be really careful not to cut yourself. So just cut a little notch on one side, a little notch on the other. And if you can, maybe score a channel right across the top because this is going to help secure your sign. And if you need to, you can also put a staple in there once you get it on there. Then you need to prepare your top and bottom ends of bamboo. You can also use wooden dowels if you don't have access to bamboo. All you need is a small notch for the bamboo to kind of sit on. So something as small as this little score is something that the string will catch on, but we usually also put tape on the ends too. Let's go ahead and feed our bamboo through the top and the bottom. So we'll just sec secure this end with a little bit of tape. Now, while you're working on the bottom of the banner, go ahead and figure out where center is and you're gonna cut a little slot in your fabric, just a little slit. Take your piece of bicycle tubing and put it through there. That ends already. So here's where the string comes in. You're going to need enough to tie here, but you're going to want some slack. So, well, about yay much. Don't worry about measuring it, you can guess. And we're just going to tie knots on each end. You can also tape the ends up here to make it extra secure. But the whole idea too is this is a sign that travels well. So when you throw this in the car, you roll it up, you've got your stick, right? And that's, that's all you need. But when you get to your demonstration, you just pull your banners out, throw this on the notch right there at the top. You're going to tie the piece of rubber to the stick. There you go. This is your finished banner. Congratulations, and thanks so much for spending time with me. Go forth and demonstrate.